Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the chair uh, for her kind words and also Ibn Khaldun University for organizing this uh, timely conference. What I'll be talking about is set settler colonial violence against holy places and the Palestinian resistance towards that. Uh, as you are aware, the Israeli occupation forces has destroyed in the current attack on Gaza hundreds of mosques and churches have been destroyed, uh, some of them completely wiped out and some of them are very ancient, over a thousand years old, have been wiped off the uh, map uh, of uh, Gaza, but I'll be concentrating on the uh, West Bank in particular, uh, where uh, settlers uh, are actively, continuously uh, attacking uh, holy places. And I would like to start with the uh, Christian, their attacks against the Christians, and then I'll move to the uh, Muslim holy sites, and particularly I'll focus on Al-Aqsa uh, Al Mosque. Uh, we see uh, an escalation uh, against uh, attacks against holy places uh, in the West Bank uh, and also inside the uh, 1948 uh, land. Uh, and this, these attacks are uh, on the rise and they have been going on for quite a long time. Uh, some of the, chur the churches that were attacked is Mar Ilyas Monastery, and what happens is the uh, youth uh, stand up against the settler uh, uh, mobs and try to prevent them, and even trying to, to, to even call the uh, Israeli police who do not turn uh, up uh, when, when they are called. Uh, Greek Orthodox Church, the Maronite Church in Acre, uh, in Akka, a monastery in Jaffa, um, and uh, Father Samir Zaknun, he said, talking about some of these attacks is barbarically storming Christian sites. And I'll quote him directly in which he says, Christian churches have become daily targets for attacks by settler gangs who are clearly taking advantage of, extremist, uh, of the extremist uh, government um, the Israeli political hierarchy towards Muslim and Christians in the, uh, in the country. Uh, a report published in 2021 by Haaretz uh, says that the uh, Israeli police closed nine out of 10 cases investigating hate crimes against mosques and churches. And the, uh, from 2018 to 2020, saying they are unable to identify the perpetrators. Um, and you've heard recently uh, something very interesting. Um, Jews going uh, by churches, spitting uh, at Christians or spitting at the churches. And this is something uh, when Itimar ben Gavir tried to explain it, he said, this is an ancient Jewish tradition that brings blessings to those who will spit at a statement from a minister trying to justify uh, the, this uh, vile attacks against uh, Christians uh, is, uh, is uh, unheard of. Uh, the protection of churches, and you will see it also in the case of Al-Aqsa Mosque, is done by both Muslims and Christians. So when churches are attacked, it's not just the Christian youth that stand against the settlers, it is the Muslim and uh, Christian youth that stand together. And you've seen it um, at Bab al-Aqsa spot in Al-Masjid al-Aqsa, where Christians, Christian youth in Jerusalem joined forces with the Muslims demonstrating against the Israeli attacks uh, uh, at Al-Masjid al-Aqsa and protecting the Muslims while they are praying from the, the soldiers' uh, attacks. Um, moving on to attacks on mosques, you have seen a lot of mosques, uh, Israel claiming uh, actually uh, overtaking them completely uh, in, many, in many places. 
um, and particularly some of the maqams uh, in Jerusalem and also across the uh, West Bank. But I would like to concentrate on two uh, examples uh, that are very clear. One is uh, Al-Ibrahimi Mosque in Al-Khalil, and the second one is Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is today the center of uh, the uh, conflict. Even Tufan Al-Aqsa was named after Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa because of the attacks that were taking place. You just saw before 7th of October, the attacks on Hanad Al-Halawani, the attacks on Aida al Sidawi, the attacks on uh, Muslim uh, 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 murabitat, uh, women standing at the gates of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa uh, by both settlers. You saw how Aida Sida was kicked in the face by Israeli settlers and spat on and pushed around, not just by the settlers, but also done also by the Israeli uh, occupation, uh, occupation uh, forces. Uh, this is not something new. Uh, a lot of people think that this is, this is something that started with the uh, current government, but this is uh, quite, uh, uh, it, it's, it's been going on since um, before 1967, uh, since 1948, lots when Palestine was occupied, when the British withdrew, and uh, the Nakba in 1948, you saw uh, a lot of uh, mosques were able, overtaken by some of them turned into uh, stables, some of them turned into pubs, some of them turned into, this is post-48, but I'll concentrate on the two examples that I'm mentioning is uh, post-1967. The first one is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa was occupied on uh, June, 7th of June, 1967. Israeli uh, occupation forces raised the Israeli flag on top of the Dome of the Rock. Uh, the chief rabbi suggested that we should blow up the Dome of the Rock and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa amidst, amidst the war. Uh, and no one will take notice of, notice of it. Uh, as we see today in Gaza, hundreds of mosques are completely destroyed. Some of them uh, are, uh, actually most of them are older than the, uh, the Israeli state it, uh, itself. But um, in 1967, uh, part of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa was taken by the Israeli occupation forces, and that is Al-Burak Wall. Al-Burak Wall, prior to the 19th century, had no holiness to the Jews. Today, it is the holiest site, quote-unquote, to uh, the Jews around the world. Uh, Israeli uh, Zionist and Jewish sources clearly say that pre uh, the Ottoman period, this wall had no significance. However, they attached certain significance to it. And this is not just something that happened with Al-Burak wall in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. This has happened with, um, and you'll see this in an Israeli uh, uh, human rights report, um, talking about the deal of the century. Uh, many of the holy, so called holy sites for Jews in Jerusalem are made up. They're actually, they do not have any uh, holiness. However, this holiness, uh, like with Al-Burak wall, uh, the Western wall of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, has now become a national and religious symbol for uh, Judaism. Uh, in 1969, uh, a Christian Zionist, not a Jewish Zionist, a Christian Zionist, and today Christian Zionism is a driving force for many of the attacks uh, happening in, uh, in, in Palestine. Many of the uh, tunnels that are dug un underneath the Masjid Al-Aqsa are spon sponsored by Christian Zionists of the United States. Um, and uh, lots of settler uh, organizations are involved in, uh, in, the, in this uh, point in, in, in particular and funded by uh, Christian uh, Zionists. Uh, in 1969, a Christian Zionist, with the help of uh, uh, some uh, Jewish Zionists, managed to 
enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and burn part of Al-Aqsa Mosque as part of a fulfillment of a prophecy that the temple will be built on site of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa within four years after 1967. And this is forcing the hand uh, of, uh, of God. There has been tens of attacks by Israeli occupation forces on Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa since 1967 and by settlers. And uh, Al-Aqsa massacre happened in 1990. Al-Aqsa massacre where 29 Palestinians were killed uh, and martyred inside Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa with hundreds uh, wounded was because of uh, uh, Christian, uh, sorry, Jewish Zionist extremist settlers uh, wanting to, uh, to uh, put the foundation stone for the building of the temple on the site of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the Temple Mount Faithful, uh, uh, where uh, in October 1990, uh, uh, to correct what I said as 29, it was 23 killed and 150 uh, wounded. This is beside smaller attacks that have continued before and after. So an extremist Zionist uh, temple group wants to put a cornerstone uh, for the building of the temple on the site of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, and the Muslims are the ones that pay the price. This actually, even before the creation of the State of Israel, happened at Al-Buraq Wall in 1929, when the British uh, were occupying uh, Palestine, and uh, this, uh, uh, this idea of wanting to share the Muslim holy space and to claim it to be uh, a Jewish one, as has been done with other, uh, other places. The example of the Ibrahimi Mosque is a Jewish extremist settler. Today, the uh, inspiration for uh, Itamar ben Gvir and many uh, Jewish settlers, uh, a doctor, uh, Baruch uh, Goldstein, in the month of Ramadan, we are actually, we're just uh, two days uh, later, it will be the anniversary of this massacre. He enters Al-Masjid Al-Ibrahimi in Hebron uh, in the morning prayer in the month of Ramadan. And while the Muslims make sujood, he shoots them and kills 29 and injures hundreds. A settler enters a mosque, kills 29 Palestinians on the spot, and Israel, what does Israel do? Israel, he's become a heroic figure to the settler groups, not only that, Israel closes the mosque for six months, and when it reopens the mosque, the mosque is divided into two. 60% for Jews, 40% for Muslims. The reason I'm giving this example in particular is because this is exactly what in the Israeli Knesset was discussed to be applied for Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, many times uh, during this discussion, um, particularly with this right-wing uh, government. Just last year, in 2023, 48,200 settlers have entered and stormed Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa throughout just 2023. You have seen the attacks last Ramadan, against Muslim worshippers in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Has this happened anywhere else in the world? The whole world would be, uh, uh, you saw when a synagogue was attacked in, in Paris, the whole world leaders, including Turkey's, uh, at that time, Prime Minister Ahmed Dawood Olu, joined forces with all the leaders of the world, walking uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, against this. This has happened in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and in the Ibrahimi Mosque many times. And very disturbingly, the world is uh, silent uh, at this. Attacks are not just against mosques and against churches, also graves. And you see uh, in uh, Jerusalem, in Al-Quds, uh, attacks 
by settlers against the uh, uh, graveyards and also by the Israeli establishment in which Israel built uh, a museum of tolerance over the graves of the Muslims that it destroyed. And it called it, ironically, um, uh, the Museum of uh, uh, Tolerance. How do the Palestinians respond to this and how do they resist this? You see this, you saw this in Bab al Asbat, uh, where the Palestinians, um, when Al Masjid al Aqsa was closed for two weeks, this concept of sumud uh, and resistance is uh, incredible. It started with the Israelis putting these metal detectors at the gates of Al Masjid al Aqsa. Um, also, it put uh, cameras and the decision that was made there on the spot, we will not enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa until these are removed. And this resistance grew. Israel tried to crush it immediately. Uh, the more Israel tried to crush, the more re the resistance grew stronger. And this is where everyone, even those who do not pray, this is uh, very interesting, uh, even those who... Muslims who do not pray, even including Christians, they came and we will not allow Israel to go ahead with overtaking Al-Aqsa. And you, hear, you heard um, uh, Father Manuel uh, Msallam and you've heard many of the priests saying an attack on Al-Aqsa is an attack on the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is how this, and they stood together against this Israeli uh, aggression. And what you see was a grassroots movement uh, that was not directed by anyone. Uh, and even the religious uh, figures in Jerusalem had to go along with, because the Awqaf, the Jordanian Awqaf, wanted to, the, the, even the, uh, the guards of Al-Aqsa to enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa uh, with the gates. The people refused. And uh, the head of the Awqaf then uh, even threatened to fire these people if they did not enter. They resisted and they stood their ground until Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, Israel was forced to remove the barriers, remove the cameras. And this was a massive victory. And one gate Israel insisted on keeping closed, which was Bab Hutta. And the decision was made, we will not enter except from Bab Hutta. And Israel, through um, uh, gas uh, uh, and sound bombs, uh, grenades against the people there, eventually Israel uh, uh, opened all the gates of Al Masjid Al Aqsa and the people entered. And this was a very symbolic victory for Palestinians. These little victories actually give people a lot of hope in terms of crushing this occupation, this illegal occupation. Israel has nothing, uh, according to international law, Israel is an occupation force in Jerusalem and also in, uh, in, in, in the West Bank. Palestinians see it as occupying all of Palestine. This is something that most of the Palestinians even today living in Gaza are actually refugees from uh, the 1948. Um, another symbolic victory was Bab al-Rahma which Jordan, the Jordanian Awqaf, with the Israelis, uh, have agreed that this is the way that they will move forward. The people there insisted and they fought. And there was a lock uh, uh, on, on, on the gate uh, by the Israelis, and they broke that lock. And then it was replaced by a Jordanian lock. And, and this game that is being played here, uh, the people in the, the, the Maqadisa, the people of uh, Beit al-Maqdis of Jerusalem, this is so, not something that they, they, they will uh, let go. And they insisted and they broke the second uh, lock until they entered Bab al-Rahma, which Israel was, as uh, Sheikh Akir Masabri, the Imam of Al-Masjid al-Aqsa, has clearly mentioned that Israel is planning to turn this to be part of a synagogue. The last point that I would like to uh, wrap the discussion with is part of the deal of the century. What is uh, many of the discussion that is happening today in Gaza, but our 
uh, discussion uh, is not focused on that, but the idea of unarming the resistance in Gaza was already clearly mapped out in the deal of the century, Trump's deal of the century. And with holy places, uh, it is uh, particularly Al-Aqsa Mosque, this is something I'd like to quote from it directly. Uh, the text sounds very inclusive. However, it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the memoirs of Jared Kushner, uh, he clearly writes that the night before the deal of the century was uh, announced, he was sitting with uh, Netanyahu going through the uh, last text. So this is a text that was drafted with Israel's vision for, uh, for uh, Beit al-Maqdis and for Al-Aqsa in particular. It says, and I quote here, Jerusalem holy sites should remain open and available for peaceful worshippers, and underline peaceful worshippers, uh, and tourists of all faiths. This is a mosque. Uh, people of every faith should be permitted to pray on the Temple Mount, using the uh, Zionist uh, Israeli terminology, and then slash Haram al-Sharif, in a manner that is fully respectful to their religion. Let me read it uh, again without me interrupting, and then I will uh, comment on it. Jerusalem's holy sites should remain open and available for peaceful worshippers and tourists of all faiths. People of every faith should be permitted to pray on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, in a manner that is uh, fully respectful to their religion, taking into account the times of each religion's prayers, and holidays, as well as other religious factors. End of quote. What is incredible here is Israel wants to turn the site of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa into a multi-faith site. Turning a mosque into, the Christians have no interest in praying in the area of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, like the Muslims have no interest in praying in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And this was 1,400 years ago when Omar ibn al-Khattab, the second Muslim caliph, entered. He particularly, even when the patriarch asked him to pray in the church, he said, I will not pray because this will, down the line, Muslims will turn around and say, this is uh, uh, where Omar prayed and we would like to pray here. Conflict prevention was something at the focus of uh, the Muslim vision of inclusivity. However, what this is suggesting is that Masjid al-Aqsa should be open here in particular to Jews during their holidays. Exactly what has been applied in the Ibrahimi Mosque in Al-Khalil during Jewish holidays, even the Israeli president participated in the dancing and in the uh, music uh, uh, worship inside the Ibrahimi Mosque in Hebron. What is aimed, and this is today the center of the conflict, and you saw this on the 28th of Ramadan uh, with the sword Saif al-Quds, when in the month of Ramadan, worshippers were attacked and the settlers wanted to do this march around Jerusalem, uh, around the old city, and they insisted to do this. And the people, the Jerusalemites, the Maqadisa in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, called upon two places. They called upon Gaza, and you heard them chant, Mishan Allah, Ya Gaza, Ya Allah, uh, for God's sake, Gaza, come to our help. And the second place they uh, hoped that would come to their aid was Turkey. Uh, these are the two places because from a long time ago, the Palestinians have given up hope on any Arab states uh, to come to their aid, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and Gaza gave Israel uh, until 6 p.m. to release all the young, the youth that were arrested in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa that day uh, until 6 p.m. and to withdraw its forces from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Israel did not. So rockets were fired from Gaza and the march that was going to go around the old city was canceled. Uh, and this changed this was the first time that Gaza would come and the attack on Gaza and the brutality of the attack. And you hear the people today coming from underneath the rubble saying, Kullu fida al-Aqsa. All of it is 
our sacrifice towards Al-Aqsa. This Al-Aqsa being at the heart of the Palestinian resistance, a symbolic of Palestinian resistance, is extremely important. You saw this last Ramadan, the Ramadan in between, uh, and unfortunately, what Israel is planning for Al-Aqsa this Ramadan, you have heard clearly Itamar Gibbin Gavir and also Netanyahu approving the restrictions that will take place. This will not just ignite uh, the situation once more. The attacks on Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa against the Muslim women prior to 7th of October, you heard the uh, resistance fighters clearly saying uh, on the 7th of October, making reference to the attack on Muslim women at uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. This was clearly seen in, in, in many of the videos. Um, and what Israel, uh, with this extremist government, is planning for this coming Ramadan will explode the situation beyond anything. What Christian and Jewish Zionists like to see is not just the uh, incursions inside the Masjid Al-Aqsa, uh, and not just um, that they would like to uh, pray inside the Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is now uh, uh, allowed. Uh, you've seen video uh, recorded by uh, settlers inside the Masjid Al-Aqsa cursing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You saw Itamar bin Gavir going inside uh, saying this is ours and we will not give it up. You saw these statements uh, and uh, the where we are heading seems to be that Al-Aqsa is again the, uh, at the center of, um, uh, of this uh, conflict. And if Israel goes ahead with banning uh, Muslims entry into their holy sites, allowing uh, spatial and temporal division of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Um, this will go beyond uh, uh, anything that anyone would expect. Um, and uh, we say in, in, in Arabic, uh, Israel is playing with fire. And this will backlash against uh, uh, Israel and its uh, supporters, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, I would like to end by saying that Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is not just a Palestinian mosque. Uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is not a Palestinian church. It belongs to uh, both the uh, Muslim Ummah and the Christian Ummah around the world, and uh, their voices need to be heard in order to protect these holy sites and to protect the people of Palestine and what is dear to them. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.